Good evening, dear televiewers, and welcome to the 6 p.m. English Prime News of Akamdis Television. We begin right away with the headlines. The mortal remains of the former Prime Minister, Pa Simon Achidi Achu, have arrived at the Yaoundé Simalen Airport this morning from Washington, D.C., where he died May 4, 2021, after a prolonged illness. Joseph J. Chobunken Kalabukse is the new president of the National Communication Council. He was installed this June 29 and takes office immediately after installation. We'll be coming more with that. The General Certificate of Examination, GCE, and First School Living Certificate of the English Subsystem of Education begins this June 29 throughout the National Territory for the 2020-2021 academic year. More of this in some seconds to come. Thanks for joining us for the 6 p.m. English Prime Newscast. We begin with a sad note where the former Prime Minister Pa Achide Achu Skop has finally landed at the Simalane Airport this morning. He, the, the former Prime Minister, who died since May 4, 2021, after a prolonged illness in Washington, D.C., finally landed at the Simalane Airport. A reporter, uh, Tabby Clarkson, was at the Simalane Airport and paints an image of what happened there this morning. It was by 1 a.m. this Tuesday morning that the flight, Air France, transporting the remains of Pa Simon Achidiachu, touched the tarmac of the Yaoundé Simalen International Airport. At the airport, to receive the corpse of Pa Achidi were relatives, friends, government ministers, amongst them former Prime Minister Philemon Young and the Minister of Labour, Gregoire Owona. The moments at the airport were solemn. Not my boss. But my father to eat with the driver, gendarme, and, two, and so on. The only thing I will, I will regret, and I'll ever regret in my life, as far as concerned. But I've learned a lot to be humble. That's the highest thing I've learned from Pa, to humble yourself. Pa always said, humble yourself and get what you want from any person. No pain, no stress. He transitioned in a lot of peace. And so far, his entire trip home has been very peaceful with all the celebrations that have been going on, starting from the U.S. in Charlotte, Douala, Yaoundé. Everything has gone on smoothly, and this is how Pa would have wanted it. This was his countenance. This was how he would like things, and we're forever grateful. Grateful to our families, grateful to our friends, grateful to our well-wishers, and the amazing support system that we have as we bring Pa home and lay him to rest. So, thank you. The corpse of Pa Achidi Achu is presently at the mock, or again at the mortuary of the Yaoundé General Hospital. As a reminder, Pa Achidi Achu died on May 4, 2021, after a prolonged illness. President Paul Bia has ordered state burial for Pa Achidi Achu, who was Prime Minister for over four years, from 1992 to 1996. The man of politics, Najangi, you scratch my back, I scratch your back will be laid to rest this Saturday, the 3rd of May, in Santa, in the northwest region of Cameroon. May the soul of Pa, Pa Achidiachu, continue to rest in perfect peace. The Minister of Water and Energy, Gaston Elundo Esomba, has presented some major problems and possible solutions that, towards the water and energy crisis that have been plaguing the country for some time now. He was speaking during a special plenary sitting chaired by the House Speaker, Kavaye Yege Jibril. Bertrand Tita has an in-depth in the following report. Essentially dedicated to the problems of access to portable water and electricity in all 10 regions of the country, the plenary sitting held on Monday, June 28, 2021 in the House Chamber of the National Assembly was an opportunity for Minister Gaston Elundu Esumba to give explanation to members of Parliament. Opening the session, the Speaker of the National Assembly, Right Honorable Kavayege Jibril, said water and energy are two crucial aspects of life. He said on these two essential aspects of life rely the standard of living, the health and hygienic conditions of the people, just as for electricity which impacts on the daily economy of people and the development of our country. 
the Speaker of the National Assembly appealed for a lasting solution with regards to constant cries from the population. In his presentation, the Minister of Energy and Water Resources acknowledged the fact that there are current deficits and which are mostly triggered in general by obsolete poles and outdated equipment. He outlined the fact that one of the most important works being carried out by the government is replacing wooden poles with concrete poles for durability. Moreover, he said 10 new transformers are being imported to beef up electricity supply in Cameroon. The minister said a global amount of 6,000 billion CFV francs is needed in order to curb power supply deficits nationwide. To succeed in electrifying all of the 9,000 localities in our country which are yet to be electrified, it will be necessary on the basis of studies carried out by the local teams for the state to be able to mobilize an amount of approximately 874 billion CFV francs distributed to 10 regions. The minister who tried by all means to grant explanations to various representatives of the people was stumped by a series of questions from 30 members of parliament during the session that lasted for more than six hours. The plight of some people living in remote areas without electricity for several years now was equally exposed by members of parliament from the north, far north and east regions of the country. After about six hours of plenary session with the Minister of Water and Energy at the National Assembly, a reporter, Betran Tita, tried to find out from the Minister Gaston Elundo Esumba on the measures that are going to be put in place to regulate the water and energy crisis in the country. Let's listen to the Minister's excerpt. Immediately, you have the problem of uh, wooden ports and you have to change it by cement port because you realize that that is the first difficulty you are facing now in the sectors. And the government is working in order to improve the productions by the new dam. The Nouvelle line transmission will be completed before the end of this year. And with this line, you are sure that you are going to receive more megawatts and you have uh, another project in terms of uh, new transformer last year you received six new transformer and this year we are waiting for about uh, 10 new transformer that is going to improve the quality of the electricity in the, our country listen to what you have another project like uh, like by piece but i say that uh, you have a very, very, very strong link between water and energy. Without energy, you cannot produce water. So if you start to have the solution in energy production, you are sure that water, water will fall. We now move over to something very interesting. Come this, the Republican television of Cameroon and House, a new director general. He was officially installed this morning by the CEO of Camdis Television. A reporter wrote for Nyong part in the installation ceremony and put back this report for us. It is now official. Jean Jacques Zé is the new general manager of Camdis Television. The journalist and former general manager of Vision Catch was commissioned into his new duties this June 29, 2021 in a very colorful ceremony at the conference room of Camdis Television. To the new general manager of Camdis, apart from being a moment of joy, is equally a very challenging task. Our objective is to build a real television to inform every day, to educate daily, to entertain our televiewers. As a young television, you have the ambition to form, to perform our young collaborators, to constitute beautiful and competitive team. Our television Canal this will be in a few months one of the best television in our country.
Workers of Camdis are delighted to have a professional as general manager. He is a professional, a good professional. I want to think that you believe that uh, with his coming, he said himself that uh, we need to collaborate. With his coming, things will change in Camdis, be it in terms of uh, the image, be it in terms of uh, the personnel. We shall have uh, more and more professionals here in Camdis. Given that the station has a young working force, Jean-Jacques Zé says he will manage and organize the team for good results. We are going to manage every day. We are going to organize to elaborate job description for every one. You know, discipline will be the leitmotiv of our management. If we want to be a great television, it's capital to have young team but organized functionment. In terms of information, it is believed that many things will be ameliorated. We shall be where there is news. Uh, come this henceforth will be where there is news and uh, at uh, a particular moment, believe me, we shall be having mm, uh, not only uh, we shall be having debate programs, both in English and in French, thanks to his uh, coming, thanks to his uh, collaboration, thanks to the sources of information that he actually has. In effect, Kamdi's television and its workers are happy to have such a hard-working man as their team leader. The new Communication Council of the National Communication Council has been appointed after a presidential decree that was passed out on June 4th, 2021. Joe Chebunken Kalabuxo has been encouraged and called upon to use his experience to better the media landscape. Bertrand Tita has more in the following report. We now move over to education where the first school living certificates of the English subsystem of education have started today morning. Uh, Kamdi's television took interest in that, visited the Ekunu government bilingual primary school and tries to paint out a picture of the ambience that reigns there this morning. Let's listen to more details in the following report. Barely few minutes past 7 a.m., the clock keeps ticking towards the official time for the start of the written phase of the first school living certificate examination of the English subsystem of education. Pupils beautifully dressed, expressing confidence on their faces, are accompanied by their parents to the Ekunu Government Balingua Primary School Examination Center. Received by their teachers, the singing of the national anthem is unavoidable. Candidates have been distributed in two different examination centers. 589 candidates. 400 are writing in this center from five number 489 they are writing in Amazia. So the center is divided into two because the French people are also writing first school today. But when we are writing common in chance, we can bake some of the classes from them. So that's why some are writing in Amazia. The pupils remain courageous and confident to face their examinations. Mama told me that let me never be afraid. Let me have trust in myself. Let me also be faith in myself that I will pass. Let me not be afraid. Because like this, I cannot be afraid then a day will take me. I want to do honor to my school and my family. That it should be uh, part of me. I want to pass because I want to leave the primary school to go to Form 1 and continue on my school and my studies. I want to be some uh, somebody in life, so I want to concentrate in my education. Fortunately, no major problems have been recorded. From the morning period of the exam, since at 6 o'clock I was here, 
we don't have any case of illness or accident. The only problem we have is children who don't have misplaced their, their RCPC. And then those whose pictures have come out, those who did not have it in time, and those who are not having numbers. They are just have just two cases that their names are not found on the list anywhere. So I had to create a special room for them to write inside. A majority of the candidates are sitting in for the very first time. The school authorities brief the candidates on the do's and don'ts before, during and after the examinations. The candidates verified the names followed by orderly sitting in the various examination halls to give in their best. If you are just joining us, you're watching the 6 p.m. Prime News over Camtis Television, right from Yaoundé, Cameroon's political capital. We move forward to something else where 50 men and women have finally undergone a two-day course aimed at strengthening their capacities in the agricultural sector. The ceremony was chaired by the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Gabriel Bayrobi. Let's have details in the following reports. In strict respect of COVID-19 pandemic, there are 619 candidates for both ordinary and advanced levels sitting in for the 2021 session of the General Certificate of Education in P and J Writing Center were all very punctual with their writing materials. Very positive impression. The year has not been a, an easy one, but the way we have started this morning is very promising. Uh, I discovered that for the three regular centers here, all their candidates are present, but of four candidates who are absent but from the external centers. So uh, they have started this morning and it's all going well. The teachers are there, the invitators are there, the candidates are there. With COVID, it's normal that the measures put in place are to be respected to the latter. Uh, the students are keeping to social distancing. You saw the spacing of the students in their various halls. You saw the candidate all with their marks on. And they are watching positions placed in the campus. They are washing their hands. Guaranteeing the security of the candidates? Uh, the state has put in place security officers. You saw them at the entrance there who are there to make sure that the candidates are writing in a very good uh, atmosphere. After writing economics paper one, some students confirmed that the questions were of their reach and it's a moral booster for them to face other subjects with courage. It was not too easy, it was not too difficult, it was partially there and I'm sure that as I wrote I will pass the paper one because I I myself, I, I, I hope very well. I say that economics is really a subject that I really enjoy. So before the exam, I tried really hard not to step, not to um, waste time on studying things that I already know. But I studied things that were really difficult for me, and it came to a great extent. I'm excited for the results because I know I passed. The center that carried three institutions and an external center is accommodating 623 candidates in the 2021 GCE session. Ladies and gentlemen, we are very sorry for that mix-up. That was a report where the advanced and ordinary level have started, examination have started today with the economics paper for the year 2020-2021 academic school year. We now move over to Garua, where over 50 men and women have completed a two-day course aimed at strengthening their capacities in the agricultural sector. The ceremony was chaired by the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Gabriel Bayrubi. Let's have details in the following report. 50 young men and women from this first vintage have just ended a two-day accelerated course in the agricultural domain. The theoretical and training phase that focus on two modules in a bid to strengthen the capacities of these youths ended with a closing ceremony in Garua. We just chair the closing ceremony of a, a workshop who have been done with the young people, uh, young women, young boys, and some other agri, uh, or some other farmers in uh, techniques of agriculture and how to mitigate uh, uh, the negative impact uh, of uh, climate change 
how to improve the productivity and the income in agriculture. This comes as a golden opportunity to remind the graduates of His Excellency President Pobia's concern on youth employment, especially in the agricultural sector, that is a cornerstone of the Cameroon's economy. The head of state yeah, will provide them some equipment like uh, sprayers, like the motor pump, like fertilizer, pesticide, and uh, they will be, uh, they will supply uh, land preparation in Lagdo, about uh, uh, 11,000 hectares for the production of rice, and, uh, and urge them to walk along the Benue River uh, uh, in the down land to product. Uh, you know, like tomatoes, cabbages, and other foods. All coming from five districts of the Lamidat of Garua, the inputs, support from the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Gabriel Barubi, and the two tractors will both the agricultural sector. Other trainings have been programmed for other youths who wish to invest in agricultural entrepreneurship. This will certainly increase food productivity for the population of the northern part of the country and Cameroon as a whole. We move now to something else where the Minister of Youth and Civic Education, in, alongside his collaborators, have held a biannual evaluation meeting on a three-year special youth plan. The ceremony coupled with the sending, handing over of a rolling stock to operational technical units. Gerardin Nasi took part in the ceremony and compiled this report for us. The biannual internal evaluation meeting of the three-year special youth plan was held this Tuesday, June 29, 2021, an initiative that was instructed on February 10, 2016 by the head of state, His Excellency Paul Bia, during his address to the youth to remain faithful to his constant commitment to always place youth at the center of his concerns. So it means that the, our collaborators need more means for transportation to go and meet young people where they are and not waiting them in their uh, centers and their offices. That's the approach of uh, mobile mass animation teams uh, that we deploy all over the national territories to sensitize young people to take care of them and inform them and uh, uh, that's the follow-up of this three special youth plan. The government strategy aimed at coping precariousness among youths and promoting their contribution to economic growth by supporting the creation of businesses and decent jobs in four priority areas such as agriculture, industry and craft, digital economy and technological innovation. We are satisfied uh, with the level of implementation of this uh, three year special you plan despite the context you know of insecurity and uh, 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 COVID-19 that uh, had uh, impacted negatively the implementation. Uh, you know within the three axes of the plan we are satisfied that uh, uh, the first one concerning the National Youth Observatory is operational. The ceremony was coupled with the solemn handing over of a rolling stock to operational technical units, a way to allow them to develop in value chains, in interdependence and to contribute to the sustainable economic growth of Cameroon. We now move over to our sports page with a cover shot where the president of the Cameroon National Olympic and Sports Committee held the first session meeting after a long break caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. The meeting is in prelude to the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games to take place in Japan from July 23rd to August 8th. 12 different Cameroonian teams are going to compete during this period that athletics, boxing, judo, weightlifting, swimming, table tennis, and many others will take place in this competition. We now listen to an essay of the Colonel Kal Kalba Malbum, President of the Cameroon National Olympic and Sports Committee. Let's listen to him in this following excerpt. This uh, meeting is uh, a very important one 
because um, it is uh, just a few days before our departure to Japan for the Olympic Games. So we have qualified our athlete. Our team is ready to travel from the 3rd of July. So it was very important for us to meet and to make the evaluation of the past Olympiad and to see how we can move forward with the next uh, forthcoming uh, Olympiad. But first of all, uh, we want to keep the standard of uh, our organization to respect the values of uh, uh, good governance and we will put the athlete in the center of our strategy. So uh, we have uh, important decision to be taken. I cannot mention it here. I think it is um, normal that I could come back to the decision that we are going to take uh, at the end of the meeting. But for the moment, we are ready to go to the Olympic Games with 12 qualified athletes according to the international standards by the international federations. Uh, the government of Cameroon provides the support. Uh, we don't yet have the money, but uh, uh, I believe that we will get the money soon. We continue with a cover short where Cameroon's head of state, President Pobia, has decided to award exceptional medals to the country's indomitable handball lionesses, vice champions of the just 2020 Senior Women's Handball African Cup of Nations, played in Yaoundé from June 8th to 18th for the honorable performance at the competition. The information is contained in a lease released signed by the Minister of Sport and Physical Education, Nasis Moile Kombi. We now move out of the country where the former president of South Africa, Jacob Zuma, has been slammed a 15-month jail term. The judgment was passed by the South African top court after his refusal to appear before the graft investigations. Let's have more details with our reporter in the following report. Zuma, 79, is accused of enabling the plunder of state coffers during his nearly nine years' stay in office. This kind of recalcitrance and defiance is unlawful and will be punished. I am left with no option but to commit Mr. Zuma to imprisonment with the hope that doing so sends an unequivocal message the rule of law and the administration of justice prevails. The majority judgment orders an unsuspended sentence of imprisonment for a period of 15 months months declared ordering Zuma to hand himself over within five days. The commission of inquiry is headed by Deputy Chief Justice Raymond Congress. The panel was set up by Zuma himself under pressure over mounting scandals shortly before he was ousted in 2018 by the ruling African National Congress, ANC. But he only testified once in July 2019 before staging a walkout days later and accusing the commission's zonder of bias. He then ignored several invitations to reappear, citing medical reasons and preparations for another corruption trial. He presented himself again briefly in November, but left before questioning and Zondo asked to ask the Constitution at court to intervene. Most of the graft investigated by the Commission involved three brothers from a wealthy Indian business family, the Guptas, who won lucrative government contracts and were allegedly even able to choose cabinet ministers. Zuma is separately facing 16 charges of fraud, graft, and racketeering relating to a 1999 purchase of fighter jets, patrol boats, and military gear from five European arms firms for 30 billion rands, then the equivalent of nearly $5 billion. At the time of the purchase, Zuma was president of Tombo Beki's deputy. He is accused of accepting bribes, totally 4 million rand from one of the firm's French defense giant deals. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the that report from South Africa that we draw the curtains of our English Prime News over Camdis Television. But before we say bye, here are the headlines. The former Prime Minister Pa Simon Achiri Achu have arrived at the Yawunde Simalen Airport from Washington, D.C., where he died May 4, 2021, after a prolonged illness. Joseph Chebunken Kalabukse is the new president of the National Communication Council. He was installed this day after he was signed a presidential degree to take office after his installation. 
the general certificate of examination GCE and first school living certificate of the Indisub system of education begins this June 29 throughout the national territory for the year 2020-2021 academic school year. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for being there. It has been an honor. Stay in the company of more interesting programs of Akamdi's television. Have a blessed evening.